sisters, members of this year congregation, welcome to Waycross's Way Station on the way to happiness and salvation. We are gathered here today to celebrate our very first meeting and to lay to rest once and for all the bones of old Colonel Kachipi. He was formerly known as old Captain Kachipi. I hope y'all don't mind. I took the liberty of raising his rank a notch, posthumously, of course, being as he gave his life in the service of this year service. What I'm trying to say is, he did us a service, dying. <laughs> Nevertheless, and notwithstanding, even though I suspect that his soul is frying at this very moment, like a fresh cup fat whiskered catfish in the skillet of the devil it would not be christian for us not to pray even for what we know is impossible that's his redemption therefore knowing what we know and all things being equal and since there are no people nowhere more practiced than the art of praying for the impossible I'm going to ask you to lift your voices in prayer this morning. I want you to let the Lord hear. I say let him hear just how forgiving his beautiful black children can be. Yeah. Sister Hopkins. Walk him
know, the Lord said unto Noah, he said, build an ark, build it strong, strong enough to sail an angry sea swollen by 40 days and 40 nights of rain. I like to think of this church as an ark, Georgia Pine strong and able to sail another sea strong enough to carry us across the tears of oppression to a new Canaan freedom. The human spirit knows no boundaries. Today's dream will be tomorrow's reality, just to show us today's reality was yesterday's dream. <laughs> Cotton picking time in Georgia is against the law to be home. <laughs> Come on in and unload yourself. Uh -huh. Sit your suitcase down. It's making you look lopsided. Oh, I didn't even know. You tired? Not stepping high as I am. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry I had to walk you so far, so fast. Oh, well, I didn't mind, so walking is good for you, Miss Emmy Lou say. Well, Miss Emmy Lou can afford to say that Miss Emmy Lou got a car. While all the transportation I got in the world is tied up in second-hand shoe leather. Oh, there she is. Hey, Missy! Missy! Yeah. It's me, Pearly! Pearly Victoria? Yeah, put that battling stick down. Come on in here. Yeah. That's Missy, my sister-in-law I was telling you about. This here's the house where you was born and bred at. Yeah, it's better than being born outdoors. Love the background for your home life. Well, I wouldn't give it to my dog to raise fleas in. It's so clean and nice and warm hearted. Yeah, first chance I get, I'm gonna burn the damn thing down. The Reverend Polly is young, and that's the only thing I can't see, Miss Emmy. Come here, honey, let me show you something. Yeah. Do you see that big white house perched upon that hill there with them two windows just staring right down at us like two eyeballs? Mm-hmm. Well. That's where old Captain lived. Old Captain? Yeah, Stonewall Jackson Cachapi. He owned this here dump. Not me, and that ain't all. Hill and dale, field and farm, truck and tractor, horse and mule, bird and bee, bush, tree, cotton, cotton by bale and bowl. Every bit of cotton you see in this valley, everything and everybody he owns. Everybody? You mean he owns people? Well, look, there ain't a man, woman, or child working in this valley that ain't in debt to that old bastard. Busted. Buzzard. And that includes my brother Gitlow and Missy, everybody except me. Really, probably folks can't own peoples no more. <laughs> Miss Emmy Lou said Girl, that. you ain't working for Miss Emmy Lou no more. You're working for me. Pearly victorious. Freedom is my business. I say that that old man running this plantation on debt. The longer you work for Captain, the more you owe it to commissary. You don't pay up, you can't leave. And I don't give a damn what Miss Emmy Lou or nobody else say. That's slavery. I'm sorry, Bevan Party. Well, it's all right. Don't apologize. You just wait. You wait till I get my church. Wait till I get Big Bethel back. Wait till I stand once again in the pulpit of old Grandpa Kincaid and call upon my people and talk to my people. What about what, Bevan Party? You wait till I toll the bell. The big black sassy liberty bell to tell freedom that the bridegroom cometh and the day of deliverance is at hand. They ain't gonna promise 
No pie in the sky, no life ever after, right after you die. I've got a different banner to wave. How about some happiness this side of the grave? The Lord lives up in heaven, the devil lives in hell. You and me, we live the best we can. Move over Billy Sunday, move over Billy Graham. Make way for a new fangled creature, man. Make way for a new fangled creature, man. Ain't gonna promise no chariot ride, no glorious life on that great other side. I've got a different message to spread. How about some glory days before we are dead? The Lord lives up in heaven, the devil lives in hell, and you and me, we live the best we can. Move over Billy Sunday, move over Billy Graham, make way for a new fangled preacher man. Make way for a new fangled preacher man. Ain't gonna tell you the Lord loves you best And he's gonna prove it when you lay out to rest I've got a different puppet to play How about some loving for they take us away The Lord lives up in heaven, the devil lives in hell You and me, we live the best we can We'll move over Billy Sunday, move over Billy Graham See who's gonna dominate this valley, old Captain Tommy. Make way for a new fang, the Just side of that great big live oak tree over there, you'll find the well. It's the sweetest water in all of Cochapee County. Here. Thank you, Viva Mm-hmm. Ever so much obliged, Viva Mm-hmm. 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 Ooh, perfection. Absolute Ethiopian perfection. Oh, well, I don't know about that. What you mean you don't know about that? That girl looks more like Cousin B than Cousin B ever did. No resemblance to me. Oh, don't be ridiculous. She's a spitting image. No resemblance whatsoever. Well, I ought to know how my own cousin look. Look at her head. It ain't nearly as built like a rutabaga as B's own was. <laughs> well, what's the difference? White folks can't tell one of us from another by the shape of our head. Twenty years ago it was, Pearly. Old Captain laid bull whip on your natural behind. Yeah, twenty years ago I swore I'd see his soul in hell. He's dangerous, Pearly. We could get killed if that old man was to find out what we doing. How is he gonna find out? Cousin B is dead. He ain't seen her for years. But after all, Pearly, that rich old lady didn't exactly leave that five hundred dollars to us. She left it to Aunt Henrietta. Aunt Henrietta's dead. And when Aunt Henrietta died, Captain took the money to hold for her daughter, Cousin B. But will it work, Pearly? Do you really think she can fool old Captain? Of course she can. Missy, we'll have the $500 and buy Big Bethel back before he knows what hit him. Maybe. That's still the question of get low. Well, what about get low? Get low changed his mind. Well, then you're just going to have to change it back. I don't know. It's getting very hard to control get low ever since old Captain made him deputy for the colored. <coughs> 
deputy for the color. What the devil is that? Ask him yourself. Here he comes in there. Now y'all wait here and don't you let me catch you loafing while you wait. <laughs> what you doing home this time of day? There I was, Missy. Picking in the cotton twice as fast as a human eye could see. All of a sudden, I missed the bowl and it fell on the ground. I stooped over as fast as I could to pick it up and ripped the seat of our bridges. <laughs> there I was, Missy, exposed from stem to stern. Look at here. <laughs> Give me my Sunday school bridges. Come on, Mr. Harry, I ain't got no time to be talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Deputy for the colors. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, look here. Get low. I have got the girl. Is that so? What yeah. girl? There she is. What you think? No, nope, she'll never do. What do you mean she'll never do? Look, my advice to you is to take that girl back to Chicago as fast as you can. I can't take that girl back to Chicago. Why well, can't you take her back to Chicago? Because she's from Alabama. Well, take her there, then. Wait, 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 wait. Get low. This girl is just the size, just the type, just the style. And just the girl get us all in jail. The answer's no. Mister! Look at here. Girl or no girl, I ain't getting mixed up in no more of your nightmares now. I got my own. There's more than one way. Trap in a possum, hook in a catfish, pick in a blossom, just like there's a lot of ways of wearing a hat. There's more than one way of skinning a cat. Hey! There's more than one way of winning a battle, shaking the bad guy, making him rattle. time or two is for his own good. I know. Well, he'll recover from it. He always does. I know. Missy, it's for freedom. For Big Bethel, for you and me and Gitlow. Freedom and a little something left over. That's all I've ever wanted all my life. She do look a little somewhat like Cousin B. About the feet. <laughs> of course she do. I won't guarantee nothing, Pearlie. 
but I'll try. Oh, Missy, girl, you know every time I see you, girl, you get pretty. Stop it, stop it. Stop cutting a fool in front of company. Yeah. I just swear to pretty find you at, honey. Oh, in Dalton, Alabama, last Sunday, ain't Missy right down the junior choir. The junior choir? Behold, I said, this dark and holy vessel in whom should burn that golden, nut brown joy that Negro womanhood was meant to be. Ten thousand queens, ten thousand queens of sheep. Oh, where, where? A drudge, a servant wench, a feudal fetch pot, a common scullion in a white man's kitchen, his brown skin gray. Hey, that it's a wine of Negro vintage. I know that curly, but what's her name? Oh, well, I, I, I don't think he liked my name so much. It's Ludabelle, ma'am. Ludabelle Guts and Mae Jenkins. <laughs> Ludabelle Guts and Mae Jenkins? Well, that's nice. Nice. That name is an insult to the Negro people. Curly, behave yourself. The previous condition of servitude, a badge of inferiority. I refuse to have it in my organization. Change it. Wait, God Almighty, Pearl, I can't hear myself think. Oh, that's just what I said last Sunday, ain't this when you have a party with the preaching that thing up in the pool pit. Preaching it? I shouted clean on down to the moaners, baby. <laughs> but last time you was a professor of Negro philosophy. Honey, every time I see Pearly, he's somebody else. Missy, it's 2.15 and Gitlow is waiting. Get a move on. I already got a move on. Had it on since 4 this morning. Time is exactly what the colored man in this country ain't got and you wasting it. Pearly, would you mind stepping out into the cotton patch and telling your brother Gitlow I'd like a few words with him? Do like I tell you now. Go on, go on. Side. Wouldn't be hospitable not to sit and visit a spell with our distinguished guests over from Dodham, Alabama. Well, thank you, ma'am. Now then, let's you and me just sit back and enjoy a piece of my potato pie. You like potato pie, don't you? Yes, ma'am. I like it very much. <laughs> we'll get real acquainted. Oh, ever so much obliged, Aunt Missy, and that truly looks good. Mm -mm -mm. Ah. Mm. Mm. You know, ever since that old man took after a pearly so unmerciful with a bull whip 20 years ago, he fidgets. Yeah. Always on the go, rattling around from place to place all over the country, one step ahead of the white folks. Something about Pearly always did irritate the white folks. Is that the truth? Oh, my, yes. Finally wound up locking him up a time or two for safekeeping. He always kept up his schooling, though. In fact, that boy's got one of the best secondhand educations in this country. Is that a fact? He used to read everything he could get his hands on. He did. Ain't that wonderful? <laughs> Till finally one day he got tied through all his books out to the homes. Wouldn't no Negro in him, he said. Then we went up north for a while, and now he's in such a hurry to change things down here. I'm afraid he's gonna lose his mind. Lose his mind? No! Oh, no! <laughs> Unless you and me can do something about it. You and me ain't missing? Well, well just tell me that I, I do anything. Well, now, ain't nothing all that peculiar about a man that a good wife and a family and study home cooking won't cure, don't you think so? Oh, well, them guests ain't missing, yes. Hm. You be surprised how many tall, good looking, great, big old, handsome looking men, just like them poor. Out there starving themselves to death. <laughs> I just wish I had one of them named my part at. Well, Pearly Judson is the uncrowned appetite of the age. He is? Well, well, what's his name? Anything. Anything but fine looking, strong, healthy girl like you can put on the table. Like, like me, ain't? Like me? Oh, ain't messy. You know what? I love to set. And hear him dream. He tells it like a story. Talks about a better time. Happy days and glory. He says, no more scratching for us. 
Chicken hookerberries, roasted ground peas, quilt and be part of the barbecue. <laughs> it's that certain kind of welcome. You, you just can't get it nowhere else in all this world. Life is really good to us sometimes, ain't miss. Oh, child being colored can be a lot of fun when ain't nobody looking. Huh. <laughs> ain't messy, I always said I would never pass for white. No matter how much money they would offer me, not unless the things I love could pass, too. <laughs> Ain't it the beautiful truth? <laughs> yes, sir. Get no say if you want him, come get him. That man do take his cotton picking serious. Did you get enough to eat, honey? Oh, indeed I did, eh, Missy? I ain't had potato pie like that now since the senior choir had that. That's why I meant get low. Huh? I was in the senior choir. Oh, hey, Missy, you didn't tell me you could sign. Yeah! Damn it, Missy, the white man is 500 years ahead of us in this country, and we ain't ever going to catch up with him sitting around on our non-Caucasian rumps talking about the senior choir. This way, honey. Let me take your suitcase. Yes, ma'am. Where Cousin B used to sleep at? Oh, uh, don't forget her clothes, honey. Cousin B was known for her clothes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Preacher. Right. If we do pull this thing off, what are your plans for her after it's all over? You gonna send her back where she came from? Where? Dothan, Alabama? Never. Well, there's a million things I can do with a girl like that right here in Big Bethel. Yeah, just make sure they're all legitimate. Anyway, marriage is still cheap, and we can always use another cook in the family. Hey, Missy! Yeah, honey? Hey, Missy, I 
honey. Who pictured this on the dresser? Oh, that's Cousin B. Cousin B? Yeah, poor thing. She's the one this whole thing's all about. Oh, about, oh my goodness, my goodness gracious. What's the matter? Well, she pretty. She's so pretty. Yeah, she was pretty. I think they took this before she died. You mean y'all want me to look like her? That's the idea, honey. Now go on in and change your clothes. They sent this Wait. down to us from the college. Don't she look smart? I bet she was a good student when she was living. A good student? Yeah, one more year and she'd have finished. Oh, my goodness gracious. Lord, have mercy up on top of my post on here. Awake. Oh. Awake. Put on that strength, oh Zion. Put on that beautiful garments and hurry. Missy, Big Bethel and Gidlo is waiting. Grandpa Kincaid gave his life. Now, it is a far better thing you do now than you have ever done before. And Gidlo ain't never got his head knocked off in a better cause. <laughs> hey, where do you think you're going? Come here, come here. Reverend Potter! Get over Reverend, there. Reverend Potter! Reverend Potter! Did, did, did you see that? Did you see all them beautiful clothes in there? Slip hat shoes stocking, knocking on stocking like Miss Emma Lou wearing a dress like Miss Emma Lou don't even wear. Did you look at all what was in that big box in that yard? Of course I looked. I got it, all of it for you. For me? Yes, I told you. Reverend Pearlie, now I'm a good girl. I know that. I ain't never done nothing colored white or otherwise to hurt nobody. I works hard, I'm mops, I irons, I'm clean, I'm polite. I know how to get along with white folks cheering better than they do. I pays my church dues. Every second and fourth Sunday that the Lord see. I cook catfish. I cook, I cook catfish and hush puppies. You like hush puppies, don't you? Well, of course party? I like hush puppies. I cook hush puppies and cone dogs. Cook your cone dogs to give you a swimming upside your head. But I ain't never been in no mess like this in all my life. Mm -mm. Mess? What kind of mess? You, you mean you want me to go up that hill? And all them put a clothes and pretend in front of white folks that I'm your cousin B, somebody I've never seen a heart of before in my life. Why not? Some of the best pretending in the world is done in front of white folks. <laughs> but I didn't know she was no student up at the college. I, I thought she worked there. I told you on the train. Oh, so don't do no good to tell me nothing. I don't never listen. Just ask Miss Emma Loon and they'll tell you I don't listen. I didn't know it was no college lady wanted me to make like that. I thought it was for a sleepy and like me. No, I thought that stuff in them boxes, Yana, was for maids and for cooks. But I, I never been at no college. Well, so what? College ain't so much where you been, it's how you talk when you get back. <laughs> now, anybody can do that. Look at me. I think y'all better look at me like Miss Emma Lou. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, that was, oh, oh. No, that was, oh, no, that was, you didn't tell me that was no college lady, woman. I can't make that no college lady. You didn't tell me that. That was, 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 don't tell me that after all that big talking you done on the train about white folks, that you scared. Well, talking big is easy from the proper distance. <laughs> Why? Don't you believe in yourself? So? Well, don't you believe in your own race of people? Yes, sir. A, a little. Well, don't you believe the black man's coming to power someday? Almost. 10,000 queens of Sheba! What kind of a Negro are you? Where is your race pride? I'm a great one for race pride, so believe me, I am. It's just that I don't need it much in my line of work, see? <laughs> <laughs> see, see, Miss Emmy Lou said... Damn, that... Miss Emmy Lou! Now, 
does her blonde hair and blue eyes make her any more of a woman in the sight of her men folks than your black hair and brown eyes and mine? No, sir. Is her lily white skin any more money under the mattress than your fine fair brown? And if so, why does she spend half her life at the beach trying to get a suntan? <laughs> Well, there's a whole lot of things about this Negro question you ain't never thought of. The South is split like a fat man's underwear. <laughs> and somebody beside the Supreme Court is gonna have to take a stand for the everlasting glory of our people. Yes, sir. Snatch freedom from the jaws of force and filibuster. Amen to that. Put thunder in the sin. Yes, Lord. And righteous indignation in the halls of Congress. Yes, them, Lord. Make civil rights from civil wrongs and bring that old civil war to a fair and just conclusion. Yes, them, Lord. Remind this white and wicked world that there ain't been more than a dime's worth of difference twixt one man and another, irregardless of race, gender, creed, or color, ever since the Lord God himself almighty set the first batch out to dry before the chimneys of Zion got high. Yeah. The eyes and airs of the world, his own big purpose. Amen and hallelujah. And whose side are you fighting on this evening, sir? So Thank God Almighty, that's what I'm on the loud side. Oh, the amulet on it, young and deaf, stand and shout, world watch out. The battle ain't lost, that ain't been fought. With you ahead if you think it's thought. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. The tougher they talk, the quicker they crawl. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. And you're as good as ten feet. You taste defeat, fall your beat, don't retreat. Ain't nothing been lost, you can't retrieve. And you ain't lost if you just believe. The bigger they are, harder they fall. Tougher they talk, quicker they crawl. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. And you're as good as ten feet tall. Fish. He picked him out oh, well. And Daniel Bless his heart He chose the den Instead of the cozy jail Don't ever conclude you whip for sure Try some more Try the score So what if the odds are looking long the fight is yours if you sing this song. The bigger they are, the bigger, the harder they fall. The tougher they talk, the quicker they crawl. Sing! The bigger they are, the harder they fall. This is outrageous. But Reb, it's a catastrophe. You are a disgrace to the Negro profession. But Reb, that's just what she said. That's her exact word. Who is responsible for this? Huh? Where is your ma and pa at? Oh well, I reckon I ain't got no ma and pa wherever they at. What? Nobody else neither that I knows of. See, I've been on the go from one white folk kitchen to another since before I can remember how I got there in the first place or whatever become of my mom, pa, and my kinfolks. 
Hmm. You know what my real name is? Well, ain't nobody right to say it. Hmm. Motherless child. That's just what Miss Emma Lou say. But uh, who cared for you like a mother? Who brung you up? Who, who raised you? Mm, nobody in particular. Whoever happened to be in charge of the kitchen that day. Well, that would explain the whole thing. There ain't no wonder. You didn't miss the most important part of being somebody. I have? Mm-hmm. What part is that? Love. Love? Well, yeah. Love. Yeah. What's being appreciated? Being sought out, looked after, being fought to the bitter end over even. I have missed that all right, Reverend Paul. I really have. Now, you take me all my life. I never got looked at like the other girls gets looked at. Well, now, that's not really so. Because <laughs> I remember the first time I saw you right up there in the junior choir. I give you that look. You did? Mm-hmm. I thought so. <laughs> I prayed so. All through your sermon, I thought I was going to faint from hoping so hard. So, Reverend Paul, I think that's the finest look a person could ever give a person. Oh, Reverend Paul. Uh, Ludie Bell. Yes, Reverend Paulie. Uh, there's something of, uh, uh, something of great importance that I would like to ask you. Uh, yeah, Well, Reverend it's a question, Paulie. yes, it's a question that I never in all my life thought that I would be asking a woman. Yes, Reverend Paulie. Uh, would you, well, you see, I don't exactly know quite how yeah, yeah, to, to yeah, say this. Yeah. Would you, uh, yeah, huh? would you mm. be my disciple? Yeah! Reverend Polly, what happened? Gitlow done changed his mind. Toll the bell, Big Bethel. Toll that big, black, sassy Liberty Bell. Tell freedom. Tell freedom. Tell freedom. done this to you must have meant to knock your natural brains out. I already told you who done it. Ow! Charlie Cotchapee, if you don't hold still and let me put this hot poultice on your eye, you better. Ooh. You didn't tell Pa. I didn't have to. The whole town did. Oh. Charlie, you want to get us both killed. I'm sorry, oh. Adela. All I was doing was singing one of my songs. I done told you about performing them songs in public places. And you know everybody around here, they don't like music like you and I do. I don't mean to make trouble. Oh, I know you didn't, son. I know it. <laughs> no, OK, OK. There, I'm finished. When you get a free minute, you come on up to the house and let me put another hot poultice on that eye, you hear? Thank you, Adela. I am much obliged to you. Oh, oh wait. Before you go, can I play you one of my new songs and you can tell me if I'm on the right track? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> if the barrels of war were barrels of peace, dissenters would all be backers. The barrels of war would be barrels of peace if the barrels were filled with crackers. That ain't it, honey. <laughs> I got one more. Uh, 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 the 
kaleidoscope of my emotions trace the still uncharted oceans of a deep depression that i can't forgive <clears throat> oh the days and hours wasted longing for what can't be tasted the tender unborn love that doesn't live i told you about singing them communist songs around here you don't know boy what a strong stomach it takes to stomach you just look at you, sitting there all slopped over like something the horse has dropped. <laughs> Steam stinking all. Don't you dare talk like that to this child. Lord, when I think of your grandpa, God rest his confederate soul, hero of the Battle of Chickamauga. Get out of my sight. Take that banjo with you. No, wait. Wait a minute. I tell her. You've been closer to this boy than I've been even before his ma died. Now, you, you got anything to do with what my boy's been thinking lately? I didn't know he'd been thinking lately. Don't play with me, Idella. Don't play with me. You know what I mean. Well, why don't you ask him? Ask him. Ask him? <laughs> he ain't gonna say nothing unless you tell him to, and you know it. I'm gonna ask you one more time, Idella Landy. You've been talking revolution to my boy. I can't answer any more on that than he did. I got you. Will answer me. I'll make you. I'll make you stand right there, all day long, all night long, till you do answer me. Suits me fine. What's that? What's, what's that you say? I mean, I ain't got nothing else to do. Supper's on the stove. Rice is ready. Okra's fried. Turnips simmered. Biscuits baked, and stew is stewed. In fact. Those lemon pies that you ordered special for supper, they in the oven right now, getting ready to burn. Get out of here. Oh, ain't no hurry, old captain. Come on now, get the hell out of here. I'm warning both of you now, that little old lick guy under his, I ain't nothing but a small skimpchen compared to what I'm going to do. And I won't rest till I get to the bottom of this. You get on, Nardella. <laughs> get on, Nardella. I tell her, Landy, you get on out here before I take my cane and save me some buttermilk to go with them lemon pies. <laughs> Hear me? <laughs> them pies are done burnt. So, boy, you had yourself a morning. Yes, sir. Is that all you got to say to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are a disgrace to the Southland. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Boy, I, I could kill you. You understand that? I could kill you with my own two hands. Yes, sir. Shut up. <laughs> I could beat you to death that bull whip up there. I could put my pistol upside your good for nothing head, my own flesh and blood. Blow your blasted hair all over this valley. What the last living drop of Cochapee blood in Cochapee County? I'd, I'd... Yes, sir. You trying to get nonviolent with me, boy? <laughs> I'm ready with the book, sir. That is, if you're ready. Thank you. Thank you. What with all your Yankee propaganda, you. Barroom brawls and all the other non-Confederate activity. I didn't think you had the time. Cotton report. Cotton report. Uh, 15 bales picked yesterday and sent to the cotton gin, bringing our total to 357 bales to date. <laughs> 357 bales? Boy, that's some pick in there. Who's ahead? Uh, Get Low Judson with 17 bales up to now. Get Low Judson? Did you ever see a cotton pick in a darky in your whole lifetime? Commissary report. You ever look down there in the valley and watch old Git picking his way through that cotton patch? Holy St. Mother's Day! I bet there ain't a dark in a dog on state. <laughs> Commissary report. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, well, sir, uh, first, there's been some complaints. Uh, the flour is rotten, the beans are spoiled, and the meat is tainted. Cut the price on it. But it's also a little wormy. Well, then, just sell it to the Negroes. Something wrong? No, sir. I, I mean, sir, 
We can't go on doing that, sir. Why not? It's traditional. That's the way it goes. Everybody knows. That's the way it's always been and how it's got to be. A big fish eat. Little, little fish. Little, little fish. Eat the little fish. Eat the little fish. Eat the little fish. And that's the way it goes. And that's the way it goes. Everybody knows. That's the way it's always been and how it's gotta be. Oh, the big birds peck. The little, little birds. And the little, little birds. Peck the little birds. And the little, little birds. Peck the little, little birds. He said to find a good old fashioned, solid, hard earned Uncle Tom Tot Negro nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> the laugh in his face. <laughs> yes, sir, by the grace of God, there's still a few of us left. Yeah. <laughs> I told him all about how we grew up together. We had the same mammy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mammy was your mother. Yes, sir, bosom buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember how you used to sing that favorite old spiritual to me, you know, that I'm coming, I'm coming, for my head is bending low. I hear the gentle voices calling old black. Where the hell are you going? 
thought maybe they might need me in the back of the store. Let's get back in here. They turn around. And you show sure, Uncle Get Low your eye. Great God Almighty! Somebody done cold copped this child. Who hit Mr. Charlie? Tell Uncle Get Low who hit you. Who hit you? <laughs> See, we believe me, he can't say a word now. And just this morning, the boys is telling me this son of mine was performing for the whole town. You don't say. Singing all kinds of revolutionary songs about integration of Negroes. Negroes, he call them. Four years in college, he still can't say the word right. <laughs> well, shut my hard luck mouth. Singing all kinds of songs about how little darky children, how little white children ought to go to the same schoolhouse together. You go on away from here. Got himself so worked up, Fred, that some of them had to cool him off with a Coca-Cola bottle. Tell me the truth, old cat. I don't see any harm in them going to the same school together. That's all. Them right. go to the same school together over me and Get Low's dead body. Right, Get Low? <laughs> you the boss, boss. It's still the law of the land, and I intend to obey it. Get out of my face! Get out of my face, boy! Go to home! Get out of home! Oh, oh. Oh, get low. Oh, get low. Quick. Oh, it's my heart. Oh, get easy, low. Easy, my heart. Okay. Quick. Easy, easy, easy. A couple of pastels of that old spiritual. Gone are the days when my heart was young and gay. Gone I can't tell you, get low. How much that eases the pain. Why can't he see what they're doing to the Southland, get low? Why can't he see it like you and me? If it's one responsibility you got, boy, I told him, it's these niggers. Your niggers. Good, honest, hard-working cotton choppers if you keep after them. Yes, Lord. Ah, uh, yeah. What's going to happen to them after I'm gone, boy? That's a good question. Lord, you answer. Oh. <laughs> they belong to you. To you, boy, ever one of them. My good. old Confederate father told me on his deathbed, Feed the Negroes first, huh? after the horses and cattle. <laughs> I've done it every time. Get low, old friend. There's something absolutely sacred about that old spiritual. I live for the day you'll be singing that over my grave. So, me too, old captain, me too. <laughs> So long. Not so loud. He's right up back behind the commissary. Ain't she gonna carry no school books? Shh. So, yeah, no. Did you tell him about Lulu Bell? I mean, cousin B. No, we can tell him together. Come on. Get in here. Get in here. Come on, Cap. Come on, sir. Come on. Look, do you have all your guys ready for the presentation? Yeah, they're ready. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Good. 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 Now, do you remember everything I taught you? I guess so. Okay. Wait right here and don't be scared.
present my Aunt Henrietta's daughter, whom you remember so well, Beatrice Judson, or as we used to call her, Cousin B. Well, I'll be switched. Come. <laughs> Say, how do to the man, Cousin B? How do to the man, Cousin B? <laughs> Delighted to remake your acquaintance, I am sure. <laughs> well, what's that she said? That's college, sir. College? Yes, that's all she ever talks. You mean Henrietta's little old button out picking in his bin at college? <laughs> Bust my eyes wide open. <laughs> Will you look at that? <laughs> you remember me, honey? I'm, I'm still the old captain around here. Oh, it, it wouldn't be the same around here, sir, without you to be the old captain around here, sir. Is that a fact? Mm-hmm. That's, that's your lane, that's your cotton patch, just your commissary, and that's your bull wheel. Ah, uh, you mean you remember that? A <laughs> late like while waking up on your toes, if you please, sir. What's that? Oh, uh, just a figure of speech or two. <laughs> <laughs> well, hush my mouth, hush my mouth, get low. Hush your mouth indeed, sir. <laughs> Tell me, little Bean, how, what, what they learned you up there in that college? Well, mostly. 
me, they taught me education, but I learned something in between. <laughs> Is that a fact? <laughs> Doggone my hide, get low. Doggone your hide indeed, sir. <laughs> I tell you, I've been after these necklaces down here for years. Go to school, I tell them. First chance you get. Take a couple of courses in advanced cotton picking. <laughs> if they can't listen to me. No, no sorry, Bob. <laughs> oh, hmm. Honey, you just, uh, you just look around here. Anything you see, you want to, you just name it. It's yours. Uh, you mean really, really, really? <laughs> Being a man in country, be counting, beat my time when I see something I want. <laughs> Just name it. Some roasted penders, bottle of soda pop, stick of peppermint candy. Well, if it's all the same to you, sir, I'd rather have my money. You what? Well, well I, I'm gonna tell you like it was, Your Honor, sir. See, I could get low here and them probably here where they had one angel between them named Henrietta. Henrietta. <laughs> Henrietta. And, and, and really, Henrietta, Henrietta, she used to work for this bitch old white lady up in North Carolina for years. And then last year, this old lady died of a brain tumor. Leaving, Bright's disease. Bright's disease. Uh, leaving $500 to every servant ever worked on her place, including Aunt Henrietta. But see, Aunt Henrietta was already dead largely from smallpox. No. And she smallly from large pox. <laughs> Influenza. Influenza, and since her husband Harris was already Horace. Horace, was already dead from heart trouble. So Gunshot wounds. His heart stopped beating, didn't it? Well, yes, but uh, precisely, Reverend Pearlie, precisely. Well, since therefore, and where in this couldn't be her daughter with next next in line for the kinfolk for the five hundred dollars left in your can, your keeper ain't. Henry, but you have been saving all these lonesome years just for me. I ain't been giving them them such and funny. Oh, come out from behind your modesty, sir. My what? Why, your kindness, sir, your thoughtfulness. Why, your unflagging consideration for the welfare of your darkies has run like the clean, clear call of the clarion from Maine to Mexico. Your constant love for them is both hallmark and high water of the true gentility of the dear old South. Get low, get low. Go get Charlie. I want him to hear this. Yes. <laughs> hey, you go on, boy. Go on. And as for your faithful old darkies himself, sir, why, down in the servants' quarters, your name stands second only to God himself almighty. You don't mean to tell me. Yes, sir. Therefore, as a humble token of their high esteem, and their deep and abiding affection, especially for saving that $500 inheritance for Cousin B. <laughs> they have asked me to present to you this scroll, which bears the following citation to it, and we quote. <laughs> On sacred hill above the pine, in a hallowed a dynasty divine we pray shall never fall and so we come from far and near to share a sentimental tear to raise our voice in song and cheer
great white father of the year. Allow me to be the first to congratulate you, sir. Thank you, Pearlie. Yes. Me too, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Cousin B. Me too, old cat. Ah, get low. <laughs> I know you had a hand in here somewhere. Oh, 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 get oh. them boys back to the carton patch where they belong. Yes, uh -huh. yes. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Well, ain't you going to congratulate your father? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> I tell you, it's uh, the happiest day of my life. <laughs> my Negroes, my darkies, my own. Here, here. Yeah, yeah. Here, here. I'm, I'm just too overcome to go on. Charlie. Yes, sir. Go get me $500. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. And Daddy. Yeah, boy. All I got to say is, yes, sir. <laughs> my friends, uh, in the Holy Scriptures, it says, and I could cite you chapter and verse if I was a mind to. <laughs> In the beginning, God created white folks. <laughs> then he created black folks. And in the name of all that's white and holy, let's keep it that way. Uh, here you are, Daddy. Yeah, all right, here we go. Here. All right, it's $500 here. Just one minute there. We need a one small formality here, a receipt. A receipt, all right. I'll sign for it. Oh, no, not, not you, you. <laughs> Me? Yeah, just uh, sign your name right here on the dotted line, your full and legal name. Oh, well, it's all right. I have a power of attorney. Oh, that's all right. I know how to draw my name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charlie. Uh, now you go get the sheriff now. Because y'all are all under arrest. Arrested for what? Because she come into my presence with him and with him and swore that she was Beatrice Judson. Well, she is Beatrice Judson. Then how come she signed her name, Ludy Bell Gussie Mae Jenkins? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I want to teach him to try to make a fool of that kind of a white man. Come on, dear boy. I'll give him hot down. Come on, boy. Toll the bell, Big Bethel. Toll that big, black, ex-liberty bell. Tell freedom there's death in the family. All these wings and they still won't let me fly. All this land, all we get is six feet when we die. Don't tell me how the breezes blow The days is not to and fro Cotton fields as white as snow When freedom doesn't grow down home Down home The body can't be free down home Berry picking ain't no treats. Picking in your natural feet. The country summer ain't so sweet. It's just a lot of heat down home. Down home. Before you start your feet down home. You can have your black eye peas. Lord and 
Just can't do the things you please Crawling on your knees down a hole Up north Up where? That's the place to be Up north Up north? No, Pearly You are seven living in a room Up above a cheap saloon Your future tied up to a broom Freedom doesn't bloom up north Down home A body's better off down home Well, I'm sick of flopping in this shack Paper stuffing In the crack And toting around A burlap sack The world gets on your back Down home But no Sister picture me Way up no Missy, 
You know, if Adela hadn't told old Captain she was going to quit his kitchen, we'd all be in jail by now? Yeah, yeah, I know that too. Don't you know it's something more important in this world than having that old broken down ex-church of a barn to preach in? Like what? Like asking Ludie Bell to marry you. <laughs> asking Ludie Bell to marry me. She worships the ground you walk on. She talks about you day and night. You two could get married, settle down like you ought to, and raise the cutest little family you ever did see. And she's a cooking pole child. She left you some of her special fritters. Freedom, Missy, not fritters. The crying need of this Negro day and age is not cornbread, but courage. Not grits, but greatness. Not fat back, but fight back. Big Bethel is my Bethel. It belongs to me and to my people, and I intend to have it back if I have to pay for it in blood. Fritters. There's more than one way. Get in a cat. What you acting? That's so loud. Get low. You want to wake up that mule? Not on his day off. <laughs> There's more than one way. Get in a cat. What you acting so satisfied about? Because I got what everybody else has been fighting for. What's that? I got the money. What kind of money? The $500 kind of money. <laughs> so, you got the money, huh? Old Captain give the money to you. Get low, he said, ain't a man in this valley, black, white, or otherwise, that I would trust to protect and defend me from the NAACP but you. Is that a fact? Get low. Where's Ludy Bell? She didn't get back yet. We know she didn't get back yet. Where's Ludy Bell, Get low. What I mean is on our way home from church, we stopped by old captain's and he asked me to leave her there to help out with the Sunday dinner. And you left her there? With that for skill, old man? For goodness sake, she's only waiting on the table. There ain't no woman of mine waiting on no table for old captain. I know that scoundrel. I'm going and get her. Wait a minute. You can't get it right now. Well, what do you mean I can't get it right now? I mean, not right this minute. That'll spoil everything. Old captain wouldn't like it. How low can you get, get low? I mean, she's got to stay and bring us the $500. I thought you already had the $500. Well, not exactly. But old Captain promised faithfully to send it down by Louis Bell. Well, I'm going and get Louis Wait a minute, wait a minute. You want to buy a big Bethel back or don't you? Oh, I hope I misunderstand you. You said it yourself. It is me that the daughters of Zion should sacrifice themselves for the cause. Get low, I'm gonna kill you. Hey, wait a minute. Just... Stop oh, it. Oh, Ludibell! Oh, Ludibell, oh. honey? I think I'm gonna faint. No, I ain't gonna faint yet. I'm too mad to faint. <laughs> I ain't never been so insulted in all my dad blame life. Oh, Ludibell. Oh, I'm sorry, Rebel Polly. What happened up there? Hey, miss, I'm a maid, first class, and I'm proud of it. I ain't had no complaints to speak of since I first put my foot in the white folks' kitchen. I'm clean, I'm honest, I work hard, but one thing, I don't stand for no stuff from them white folks. Of course you don't. You don't have to. I mean, I know my job, and I does my job. And the next old sweaty, grimy, drunken old man come putting his hands on me so much as chest like he ain't got no business to. God grant me the strength to kill him. Oh, I'm sorry, Reverend. Old Captain do get playful at times. <laughs> Did he send him money? Money? What money? Ain't no money. Whole thing was a trick to get you out the house. What? So I can sneak up behind me in the paint. What I tell you? What I tell you? I know the minute I see. Oh, oh, he, he come grabbing on me, Reverend Potter. Come grabbing his nasty hand right on me. He did? And then, then he was twisting me around. <laughs> and, and painting on me. Painting on you? Where? Oh, must I read before? I demand to know, where did he paint you? That's him, all right. Oh, Missy. I know them fingerprints anywhere. It was right there in the pantry, ain't Missy. And then he, he, oh, I'm too shame. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, what did he do? Oh, what did he do? Oh, I, yeah, what I, did he do? He kissed me. No. Right, Jim? Right where? Oh, Missy, 
it for Pete's sake. He kissed my woman, get low. He kissed the woman I love. So what? So what do you mean, so what? Ain't no man kisses the woman I love and lives. <laughs> That's right. You go ahead and laugh. Let's have one last look at your teeth before I knock them down your throat. Oh, man, get off my nerves. I'm going up that hill, and I'm going to call that buzzardy old bastard out, and I wouldn't be surprised if I didn't beat him to death until he died. Oh, no, we have to now, please, now, calm down. All right, now, now listen, Pearly, don't you be no fool, boy. You still in Georgia. Now, you just got to defend the honor of the woman you love. You do it somewhere else. Uh, kissing my woman, kissing my woman. Well, well, no, no. Wait. Man, I will break your neck off. Wait, 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 w
Is it him, Aunt Missy? Is it him? No, honey, not yet. Oh, I could have swore I thought it was him. Well, what time is it? About four in the morning from the sound of the birds. Now, why ain't you sleep after all that hot toddy I give you? I can't sleep, Aunt Missy. I keep hearing bells. Bells? Wedding bells. Ain't that funny? <laughs> Oh, Lord, please don't let him be hurt bad. I listen, what do you think he could be? Now, don't you worry about Pearly Nun. Ma, you put on your pretty pink dress. Oh, yes, ma'am. It's the only thing I got fit to propose in. Oh? Well, I thought to sort of show my gratitude to be able to pull that off in my hand in matrimony is the only thing I got. <laughs> it's a nice hand and a nice dress, just right for matrimony. Oh, you think so? I messed up. I mean, really, really, really. I know so. And wherever Reverend Pearlie is this morning, you can bet your bottom dollar he knows it too. Oh, ain't Missy? Yes. Well, see, I wanted him to get mad. I wanted him to tear up that hill and push that old sweaty buzzard up his gills. You think I was wrong? I should say not. But if something bad happened to him up there on that hill, I know I'm just about going to die. Ludie Bell, listen to me. Child, I know the fear you're feeling Waiting by the door Praying for giant. If you tell him he's a giant, he's a giant. He'll believe and be defiant. He may fall, but he won't break into
air fresher and wine smoke and apple pie put me in the mind of Alabama. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, Georgia can sure smile on you when she's of her mind, too. <laughs> Arise and shine, for thy light has come. God is victorious! Oh, God, hallelujah! Oh. Truth and mercy are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Oh, man, look at you. Oh, behold the man, knee deep in shining glory. Great data, righteous march, and what happened to you? Oh. Mine enemy has been destroyed. What? <laughs> I told that old man 20 years ago, Missy, that over his dead body, Big Bethel would rise again. Harley, you mean you don't... Have I any pleasure that the wicked should die, saith the Lord, and not turn from his evil ways and live? <laughs> Ludie Bell, put on your hat and coat and hurry. Oh, yes, Missy, sir. throw us some breakfast into a paper sack there and quick. Yes. Well, well, well. If it ain't old little black riding hood there. <laughs> How was the mean old pecker wolf tonight there, Kingfish? Tell him, pretty boy, what you told us. You tell? How you sashayed up that hill with voice and fist call. Hallelujah. How you fit old Captain to a halt and a standstill. Talk that talk. And left him laying in a pool of his own Confederate blood. Oh, Missy, quit lying. Don't you dare call Pearly Judson a lie. No man called Reverend Pearly a lie, Neil. What's the matter with you people? Pearly ain't been up that hill. Pearly ain't seen old Captain. Pearly ain't done doodly squat. Uh, and all that gab about leaving somebody in a pool of his own Confederate blood ain't what the bull left in the barnyard. Five hundred dollars says it is. Five hundred dollars in cool September cash money. And that ain't all I got. Oh. Great day in the morning time, Missy. Get low, that's Ooh. it. That's it, Missy. That's it. Coach that said that ain't nothing in the world but it. Ain't but one way in all this world for nobody to get that bull with off old Captain. That's off in his dead body. And that's the ever-loving truth, so help me. Here, you take this thing and burn it in a public place. No. Ludy Bell, this money belongs to the Negro people. Take it and wear it next to your heart. Till death do us part. Get low, go wake up the mule. We do in Waycross to buy Big Bethel back. I'm going, I'm going. Five hundred dollars in cash? And a bull with the old man Kacha be himself? Man, I'd give a pretty piece of pudding to know how you did it. I'm you sure gonna you wake would. up that mule. Missy, you? Me too, Pearly. How'd you do it? So what happened when your first got up there? Well, now, don't rush me. That's what I say. Don't rush the man. Let him talk. Talk, Missy. Listen, I done told you I ain't got no time to talk. That's all right, Pearly. We'll listen in a hurry. What else we got to last us through our old age? Now, uh, what help when you call him the mountain? Whooped him. I didn't call him out and whoop him. What? Well, I mean, I did call him out. You did call him out. Yeah, but he didn't come. What? So I went in to get him. Mm -hmm. Showed up. Yeah. Well, well, what happened then? And then, well, you know, uh, he, 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 Like I told you. You ain't told us nothing yet. Come on, we Pearly, please tell us. Well, uh, here yeah, was me, and that was him. He was all twisted and bent like a pretzel. His face was twitching like a pan full of worms. His eyes was bugging out. Sweat was dreening down like rain, and tongue plumb clove to the roof of his mouth. Well, sir, this uh, thief, this murderer, this adulterer, this oppressor of all my people was just a sitting there. Stonewall Jackson Cachapee, just a sitting there. Go to rich man, weep and howl, for your sorrow shall come upon you. And a wherefore, abhor yourself and repent ye in sackcloth and ashes, cause old Pearly is done. Come to get you. Uh -oh. <laughs> what did he do, Pearly? What did he do? What did he do? He fell down on his bended knees and cried like a baby. Oh, no, Captain on his knees. Don't beg me, white folks, it's too late. Mercy, what do you know about mercy? 20 years ago, when little old Pearly, black and manly as it could be, stood naked before you and the bull whip and pleaded with tears in his little old eyes, did you have mercy? No. And I'll not have mercy now. Mm. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, ye serpents, ye vipers, ye low down sons. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Ain't do it. And then, bless my soul, I looked up 
up from the blazing depths of my righteous indignation. Oh, yes. And I saw tears spill over from his eyeballs. Oh, no. And I heard the heart be clutching anguish of his outcry. Right. His hands was both a tremble and Ooh. slobber was dribbling oh. all down his lips. Yes. And he whined and whimpered like an old hound dog. Don't want you to kick That's him no him. more. Yeah. And I commenced to ponder the meaning of this evil thing to grovel beneath Jeez. my footstool. This no good love for nobody, oh, really? not fit to dwell on the face of the earth That's beside it. the children of the blessed, uh -huh. an abomination to the almighty, yeah. and a stench in the nostrils Ooh. of his people. Mm. And yet, a man, yeah. a weak man, a scared man, a pitiful man, like all the Southland, bogged down in sin and segregation, yeah. crawling on his knees before my judgment seat. Preach. But oh. still, a man, yeah. a man, he no. too, like all the South, was one of God's children. Mm. God's he children. too could never be beyond the reach of love, hope, and redemption. Oh. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere for him, even for him, some father's heart was broken, oh, yes. some mother's tears Undried. Drive, Lord. I am my brother's keeper. Yeah. Yeah. And thinking on these things, I found myself to pause and uh -oh. stumble in my great resolve. Mm. Yes. Sorrow mm. squeezed all fury from my heart, mm. and oh. pity plucked all hatred from my soul. Yeah. Oh, and the racing feet of an avenging anger slowed down to a hog and stand still. Mm. And a big black burly fist of my strong correction oh. Oh. raised on high like a stroke of God's oh. own lightning. Yeah. Hey, useless by myself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The good book yeah. say, yeah. Yeah. the good book say, love ye one another. Love one another. Comfort ye one another. Comfort ye one another. <laughs> forgive ye one another. Forgive old Captain Lord. Yes, forgive old Captain. Mm. Slowly I turned away Slowly. to leave this lump of human mess and yeah. misery to the infinite darkness of a hell for white folks only. Yes, mm -hmm. When suddenly, 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 mm. I put on my brakes. Uh -oh. Pearly Victoria stopped dead in his tracks, stood stock still, planted his feet, read back, and asked himself and all the powers that be some mighty important Question. Yes, yes, yes. How come, I ask myself, how come it's always the colored folks got to do the forgiveness? What? The what? No how come the only time a cheek gets turned in this country is the Negro cheek? Uh -huh. Now, yeah. now, 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 what was this man? This yeah. old yeah. Captain Cotchapee, yeah. that in spite of all his sins and evils, yeah. he still had dominion yeah. over me. Yeah. The Lord yeah. God made us all equal. Yes, the is. Lord God made us all brothers. He did and that. has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. Yeah. Who changed all that? Who, changed Who took it and twisted it around? Who, Who fixed it so that the declarator of independence itself might seem to be a liar? That a man the color of his skin could live by the sweat of a man the color of mine? Mm who'd live way up there in that fine white mansion and us down here in a shack not fit to house the fleas upon his dog. But wax itself fat on the fat of the land, steaks, rice, chicken, roast nails, sweet potato pies, hot butter, biscuits, cane syrup, and don't, don't, don't hit a lick of the snake. While us got to every day get up and get with it, sun up to sundown, on fat back and cornmeal, whole cakes and watermelon sandwiches, and don't wind up on it in the ground. So get there and stand it up here. I want you to tell me one time who made it like that? Oh, who put know. the white man on top? Surely not the Lord God of Israel, no. who is a just God yes. and no respecter of persons, yes. who proved in the American Revolution that all men are created equal, endowed with civil rights and first class citizenship, Ku Klux Klan and White Citizens Council, notwithstanding. Oh, yes. Yes. And when my mind comes to commemorate and reconsider all these things. Uh -huh. And I thought of the black mother in bondage, and I thought of the black father in prison. Yes. And the mama herself, Missy can tell you how pretty she was, she how she it. died outdoors on a dirty sheet. No, Lord, no. Cause the hospital doors set for white folks only. Uh -huh. A 
the prophet. God rest his soul. He brought her tender loving body back home and laid her to sleep in the graveyard and cried herself to death among his children. Pally, pally. Then did the wrath of a righteous God possess me and the strength of the host and of ten thousand swept into my good right hand. Yes, Lord. Yes. And I rose and I smote old yes. captain a mighty blow yes. and the wind from my fist ripped the curtain from the eastern wall. Yes. And I felt the weight of his old bull whip nestling in my good right hand and the fury, I say the fury of a good God almighty was within me and the Beat him! I whopped him! I flogged him! I got him! I lashed him! I shot him! I made him! I shot him!
And tonight, just because I went up that hill and disembezzled my own inheritance you stole from me. I've had a belly full of your black African sack. Wait a minute, Pa. It was me stole your money. Steal? A contrapee? It's biologically impossible. I tell her he's delirious. Now, Charlie, my boy, tell me the truth now. Who stole the money? It was Pearly, wasn't it, boy? Well, Pa, as a matter of fact, it was mostly me that broke in and took the money, I'd say. In fact, it was all me. No. It was the only thing I could do to save your life. Save my life? When Pearly come up the hill after you last night, I seen him. And lucky for you that I did. The look he had on his face against you was not a Christian thing to behold. It was terrible. into that commissary right then and there, open that safe and pay him his inheritance. And even then, I had to beg him to spare your life. You spare my life, boy? How dare you? Now, Charlie, my boy, I know you never fully recovered from the shock of losing your mama practically before you was born. But don't you worry. It was Pearlie who stole that money, and I'm going to prove it. Get low, oh, old friend there, arrest this boy. Get low, as deputy for the color, I ordered you to arrest this boy for stealing. Gone are the days, baby. Get low. Stealing, is it? I'm going to really give you something to arrest me for. Have a care, boy. I'm still a white man. Congratulations. 20 years ago, I told you this bullwhip was going to change hands. Stay out of my struggle for power. You can't do wrong because it's right. Never kick a man when he's down except in self-defense. And no matter what, you is and always will be the hero of Katja P. Heath. Emma? 10,000 queen. Well, I bow to the will of the Negro people. But one thing, old captain, I'm released of you. The entire Negro people are released of you. No more shouting hallelujah every time you sneeze, and no more jumping jackass every time you whistle Dixie. We're going to love you if you let us, and laugh as we leave if you don't. And one thing more, we want our share of the Constitution, and we want it now, and not with no little old teaspoon, white folks. Throw it at us with a shovel! Yeah. Yeah. Well, boy, my son, my own lily-white Anglo-Saxon semi-Confederate son. Now, we still got time to take these insolent, messy, cotton-picking ingrates down a peg and prove by word and deed that God is still a white man. Now, you tell him, boy. You tell him. Tell him what, Daddy? Tell them all about what you and me done together. You see, they'll never believe me. <laughs> tell them all about going to Waycross Saturday night in my name. Oh, yes, sir. I did. Tell him all about talking to old man Pelham in my name. Oh, yes. I spoke to him. And how you paid cash for that old barn they used to call Big Bethel. Yes, that's what I did, all right. And registered the deed in the courthouse in my name. Yeah, that's exactly what you told me to do. Well, ain't but one thing left to do with that ramshackle, dung-soaked old monstrosity. <laughs> that's to burn the damn thing down. Uh, but, Pa... First thing, uh, no, let me take a look at that deed. Now, I wouldn't want to destroy nothing that didn't legally belong to me. Uh, but 20 years of oh. being more than a mother to you. Wait, Adela, wait. I did go to Waycross like Daddy told me, and I did buy the barn. Uh, excuse me, Pearlie, the church, like he told me. And I did register the deed in the courthouse, like he said, but not in Daddy's name. What's this? I registered the deed in the name of... Pearly Victorious Judson. Pearly Victorious Judson? Pearly Victorious Judson! It was the only thing I could do to save your life. Well, Pearly, here it is. Charlie, you did a good job. I'm much obliged. Oh, no, thank you, Pearly, but I Charlie, could... Big Bethel is my Bethel. It's my responsibility, not yours. You go on, take it. No, Pearly, I couldn't take Don't your money. Don't be a fool, boy. Business is business. Yeah. Adela, I came. 
Well, I can. I'll just keep it here for you. Well, all right. But only if... But only if what? Would you let me be a member of your church? You? Little Charlie Cotchaby. A member of Big Bethel? Well, that is... Well, I mean, as soon as you get it started. I mean, well, that is if you don't mind. Man, we're already started. The doors of Big Bethel, Church of the New Freedom for all mankind are hereby declared open for business. Brother Pastor, I move we accept little brother Charlie Cotchaby as first candidate for membership to Big Bethel on an integrated basis. I second the motion. Did you ever get the feeling when you read the papers the world is caving in? That the animal part of the human heart is finally gone to win? Well, it just may be that what you see are the growing pains of liberty. And the world ain't coming to an end, my friend. The world's just come to a start. I feel it in my heart. <laughs> the world is coming to a start. And toll the bell, Big Bethel, toll the bell. Dearly beloved, recently bereaved, and friends, welcome to Big Bethel, Church of the New Freedom. And to the first integrated funeral to be held in the sovereign segregated state of Georgia. Ah, let there be no merriments at these buriments. Though you are dead, old captain, and in hell, I suspect, as post-mortal guest of honor at our expense, it is not 
too late to repent. We still need togetherness. We still need each otherness with faith in the futureness of our cause. Let us therefore stifle the rifle of conflict, shatter the scatter of discord, smuggle the struggle, tickle the pickle, and grapple the apple of peace. Amen. Yeah. This funeral has been brought to you as a public service. <laughs> Tonight, my friends, I find in being black a thing of beauty, a joy, a strength, a secret cup of gladness, a native land in neither time nor place, a native land in every Negro face. Be loyal to yourself, your skin, your hair, your lips, your Southern speech, and your laughing kindness are Negro kingdoms vast as any other. Accept in full the sweetness of your blackness not wishing to be white, nor red, nor yellow, nor any other race or face, but this. Farewell, my deepened Africanic brothers. Be brave, keep freedom in the family. Do what you can for the white folks. And write me in care of the post office. And now, may the Constitution of the United States go with you May the Declaration of Independence stand by you. May the Bill of Rights protect you. And may your own dreams be your only boundaries, henceforth, now, and forever. Amen. Amen.